Hey everyone, welcome back to Who Should You Choose, the video series where I go through the prior video's questions and comments and help you with your HUT lineup decisions. Today we are going to answer the prior video's questions. As always, you want to make sure you're subscribed to the YouTube channel with notifications on for your best chance to get your question answered on the next video. It is first come, first serve. If you don't get your question answered in the video, just come check me out on Twitch, twitch.tv slash sleeves 12 I go live weekdays at 2 p.m. Eastern time, and I'm on live on the weekends as well. But also, make sure you're checking out the Hut Hub app, my data base for hockey ultimate team if you download the league gaming app you will see hut hub is the first menu and you can get access to every single card that's in the game so if you're looking to compare cards see what attributes work synergies team build all that you can do that on the website or on the app let's get into the questions for today is uh i gotta say before i get into this though that um uh, a lot of this is going to be about team of the year, so I, I figure I would do more of these leading up to the holidays because people are starting to really try and get real nervous or prepare for team of the year, and I th just want to assist people as much as I can. So, Yo Sleeves, different kind of question for you. Which cards have you thought you were going to be beast but let you down the most? Love the content. Thank you for all the hard work you do. Oh, man. Cards that I thought would be great but ended up not. That Ottinger uh that goaltender the the ottinger card i thought he'd be really good with showstopper uh just kind of wasn't i think showstopper works as a great ability but he just didn't let anything in in terms of players i'm trying to think of like players that i regret just straight up making but so far i've been pretty lucky in that sense every card that i've made or kind of thought about i, mean, I guess yager um was a little bit of a letdown but that's just because all the other left-handed wingers are so fast and i have like ovechkin so is it too late for team of the year? Okay, this is going to be a common question. Not really. There are still essentially. I'm going to pull up. I'm going to pull up the calendar here. If we assume that team of the year happens on Friday, January 5th, which it could be. That's usually the first Friday of of the year. Um, that means that you've got rewards this week. You've got rewards next week. You've got rewards the following. That's three. And then you've got a fourth week during the week of Team of the Year. That's four cycles of squad battles, rivals, hut champs, hut rush. So you can definitely get at least one in those four weeks, okay? Um, if you are just starting now, like if you just started recently, you're going to have to take on tradable and just hope for pulls that you can, you can pay one at a discount. Right now... Because the event has not changed since its inception in 20, NHL 20, everyone is just smarter. And not to mention myself, I put up videos explaining and helping people understand that how Team of the Year works for the player base that doesn't under that for for the for the guys that go to work all week and they don't have time to know the intricacies of this entire mode. I try to put out content that can help them. And obviously that informs the rest of the player base as well. You know, how Team of the Year works and everything like that. So over the last week, prices have shot up for card fodder. 85s, 86s, 84s, all of that. You're paying the most that you're going to pay. I would not be buying them right now. I, there might be a dip around Christmas because when the Christmas noobs come in, uh, apologize if you're a Christmas noob, it's just what you're referred to as, um, you know, people get gift cards, things like that. They buy a lot of packs, and you can see a little dip. Right now, I wouldn't pay the prices for card fodder. Um, you know, again, do the math. I have a video preparing you for team of the year. When you are going to buy cards, all you've got to do is extrapolate out how much at that price it would cost you for team of the year. If it's over a million coins, don't do it, right? If it's, you know, if it's over 900,000 coins, I wouldn't do it. So keep that in mind as well. For, um... I'm trying to think of what I would do with Hut Champs. It's probably the Jumbo Elite Pack, simply because Mega Players Packs are great, but now the non-NHL Gold Players are going for, like, 750 coins. They bottomed out, and I don't think that they'll ever recover. So it's not really worth it anymore. If you go one collectible more, you can get the Jumbo Elite Players Pack. That'll give you 18 shots at 20-plus overall, 20-plus uh, 20 80 overall cards. Uh, as well as two randoms, whatever. It's only two less than the ultimate packs, and those are, you know, one collectible higher. So, no, I, I think you're okay. Um, you'll definitely be able to make one if you start this week for sure. Um, hey, Slaves, I got a question about account migration. I'm wondering if cards stay tradable after you uh, account merge or if they go untradable. I'm wondering what to spend a million coins on. Would Team of the Year collectibles transfer over if I got any? Okay, um... I hate commenting on migration because I've never done it and I don't want to be wrong because then it just absolutely crushes uh, your collection. From my understanding, it's only your lineup that transfers over, not your collection at all. I believe collectibles 
transfer over as well but i would do a little bit more research on that uh from from the ea website to get confirmation but if you've got a ton of coins what i would do is i would just buy and spend it and make sure that the cards that you're putting in your lineup are the best that you can possibly do first uh sand says i need a top four d man any sneaky good options as of right now my forwards are insanely cracked but i have no d the overall is smaller than, than you know what never mind that <laughs> Uh, Quinn Hughes, Noah Dobson, Potvin, Hedman, X Factor, McAvoy, Al McKinnis, Calvary, great, slow, but as a hard and quick shot, he does a top four D man. I mean, it's really a team builder right now. Like that's that's really it. Your check would be a great option um, from the uh, next gen event, but I don't think you can make them anymore. Um, so from this last event, Potvin is whatever. So is Bork. I mean, I still think Power of Icon Lidstrom is probably the best one just because Quick Pick is so um, useful, as we've learned now over the last month or so. Quick Pick is legitimately the only thing that's going to help you intercept the pass, uh, those cross creases. So I would probably just save for a team builder. Like, that that's really it if you're looking to improve on these guys because these guys are pretty good. I was just watching Henrik's video playing with AJ Greer, and your video popped up, but I have a couple questions. Uh, I play squad battles. I play a theme team Red Wings. I have the Dominator Hashika net, but his pads appear blue or are blue. What are the goalies pads match? When can goalies match pads match the color team colors? I wish, buddy. It's just not going to happen. I, I would, uh, you know, I, I those are the little things that you know back in the day before online play dominated everything, and that that that's what sold. Those little things are what like made franchise mode and and versus so good. Um, those are just things that we don't really have anymore because EA has a very small dev team. They have a list of stuff that they get to every year and like pads changing in HUD is probably like 21 on their list. It would be great, but you know, they have so many more things they need to fix. Can we fix the, uh, the auction house to fix prices? I saved up my coins to get 88 cane when I had enough. It was double the price. I also have the 86 cigarette to bring it. I want them on a the line. So understand that if you want a card that is only in packs momentarily, so let's uh, I'll give you a better example. So um, Heritage McDavid, at the time, the launch of the game, <clears throat> Heritage McDavid came out, and they'll be expensive because they were the highest overall cards, right? But then once they're out of packs, if they have a good ability and stats, they will spike in price. That's just supply and demand, guys. So if you really want a card, the best time, if it's only in packs for a limited time, it is that last day before it's gone. Hey, Slaves, I love the content. Looking for a 1C and 2C with either Playmaking Synergies or Sniper Sin. Oh, man. That's tough because, in my opinion, the best centers right now are like Lindros, who's been amazing, but he's um, power forward. Giroux, I guess. I'm sure there's one that like I'm blatantly forgetting. Gretzky, but obviously Gretzky's probably your best option, but like I'm assuming that's not really in the in the cards. Um a one C. Sorry, man. Yeah, like the best options, because even like Taves from Hut Champs is is I believe two way forward. Messier is two way forward. Um is Ron Francis? Ron Francis might be. Hey, Slaves, thanks for all the content making these videos. I'm in a strange spot where I pulled two of the 89 McDavid's untradeable, but I have his maxed out X-Factor. Right? If the trade-ins for Team of the Year only go up to 87s, is it still worth putting him in? Oh. So what he's saying is when Team of the Year comes out, let's say there's 87-plus trade-ins, would you throw in a higher overall for Team of the Year specifically? Man. Probably. Simply because what, so again, I'll educate the rest of the player base. So as to, as to why you don't want to just overspend on, on collection fodder for team of the year, the second team of the year is done. The 87s, 86s, 85s, everything that's used for team of the year will crater in price. Like absolutely. And it sucks because we're in the same content loop of fantasy hockey, then team of the year, then team of the season. And everything in between is just like, whatever. Right, And because progression is so slow this year, which, again, I think is a good thing. It's just the content needs to be banger. Like, the cards need to be so good for their overall. The issue is is that um, uh, you're, you're 
no one wants like a, a static 89 overall card. Like, you know, Team of the Year drops, and you've got these cards that'll upgrade. They have max synergies and unbelievable abilities. And then it's like, oh, the 89, you know, lit versus grid event, and it's a static 89 overall card. And then those prices will tank. You only get one shot at making Team of the Year. You cannot make them after. You essentially have a week, usually. I would probably trade them in. Yes, I probably would. Because by the time you could trade in 89s, which might be February or March at this point, like you're not, the stuff you're trading in for won't be worth not getting a team of the year. <clears throat> Yo, Sleeves, do you think Jack Hughes X Factor is worth upgrading still? Also, huge thanks for the bulk up NHL knowledge. Appreciate the effort. Keep on my man. So, Jack Hughes' X Factor card. I got some heat in my last No Money Spent video because I packed his X Factor and I was kind of like, ugh. Uh, but in the video, I say he's probably one of the best X factors available that you can still upgrade. I don't think he's going to get team of the year. Um, that said, he's such a good card, and he's always going to get upgrades because he scores so much now, right? Like, there's a real shot next year he gets team of the year, and he's going to get team of the season, which will happen in April or whenever, March. So I would wait. Actually, is there a point in waiting? If you don't have McDavid or someone else that has a shot at team of the year, right, then uh, what I would do is you could upgrade Jack Hughes, yes. Hey, Slaves, I asked the last time about guesses for the next holiday-themed event players. My best guess was Flurry, like Snow Flurry. Some other commenters guessed that as well, as Kane, probably Patrick over Vander, and maybe a sleeper pick of Nola Chari. Um, what do you think? Dude, you guys are so smart. This is what makes me laugh so hard is the community is so much more intelligent than me. I didn't realize that those free cards that you're getting are Christmas themed. So like uh, Morgan Frost and, and Connor Garland, right? Like those are Christmas things. Nola Chari is probably going to be one. Like he is probably going to be one. Uh, Sarah Noel is another one. Marc-Andre Fleury. God, if they give us a free goalie, people will probably be upset. Although maybe not. Um... Kane wouldn't be a bad one, but it's spelled with a C, but maybe it wouldn't matter. The 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 free one that we get, like the last one that'll be the highest overall, has got to be a pretty decent player. So I'm not sure. Ace Leaves, I stumbled into having a God Squad, pulled out his fantasy hockey tradable and at McDavid's X Factor trade. So GG, he just won. Started flipping cards and bought a God Squad. I still have 500k left, but I'm really not sure what to do with it at this point in the game. All the MSPs go on my third line, and I'm not really finding a lot of fun with the events. Any advice for a guy who just got lucky and can't really enjoy the chase for cards anymore? This is the problem. This is one of the biggest issues and why I do not I do not spend money in this game anymore. So, the major difference between a uh, a free to play and a no money and a, and a and a God Squad player, you're in a unique situation because you did not spending money and you just got really good pulls. But that's what, you're the one percent of the one percent is that you have all these cards and this amazing team. But then it's like now what? Because the new cards that come out, they don't replace anyone that's in your high inner lineup. Like for example, on my no money spent team, I'll have Gretzky, Mario, and Howe. Like they're not leaving my lineup. Then you've got. Uh, Tabo Tear or Vinen, who's a fancy hockey card, and Hurdle, maybe, or if you have another fancy hockey, that locks up your lineup. Then let's say you get one or two of the team of the year cards. They're never leaving your lineup. So now you've got like seven of your starters that can't leave your lineup, and no card is going to replace them. And that's like an issue that you run into when you spend money in the game, is that it's dictated by whatever they want to bring out as the best cards. You don't get to have fun by you know, trying out some new cards that you might not, if you know, if you if you didn't spend money. In your situation, I so I'm kind of there now. I've made all the team builders. Okay, I, um, I I want Mario. I'm, I built Gretzky. I'm gonna buy Mario because he is cheaper now to buy than make. I would not make him anymore unless you're already like halfway there. Then continue on. Um, and same with Gordy Howe. They're gonna keep falling in price. But I'm probably going to save about a million coins, and then I'm just going to buy a Team of the Year card, and then I'm going to try and see if I can get a second one with all the fodder I get over the next four weeks. That's really what I'm going to do. I'm just not spending any money um, unless a card... Like, it would take, like... I mean, Jerome McGinley, but that was from a past event, and it was free. I just built it, right? Like, I built him for free. It's one of my favorite players of all time, obviously. Um, so that's all I'm doing. I'm just holding it. There's really no reason to rush out and, and kind of spend, so that's that's what I would do. Uh, let's see. Ace Slaves, you're a legend. Just wondering what I should do with my 80 to 82 non NHLers. Appreciate ya. Let's see. (sighs) 
I'm trying to think because I'm in that situation too. Like if they're untradeable, it's just simply not worth. I mean, I because it would take so long to build Mario Regretsky now, right? Like, but it's not worth it because even at like let's say I'll do this some quick math here live on live on the episode. Say it costs 750 times. Uh, what's it? 40 per a collectible. That's 30k. You need four for a headliner, and then you need eight of those. So you're looking at, whoops, 30,000 coins times four is 120,000 coins for a headliner. You've got uh, eight of those, 960,000. Like, that's not worth it at all. You can buy Mario for, like, 700. So uh, 80 to 82 non-NHLers, power-up collectibles. It's probably the play. Just just save them for when you need to upgrade power-up collectibles. Because, we're about, guys, we're about to get to a point soon, by the way, when you get into the 90s, it's like four power-up collectibles to go up one overall. Like, it's going to be very difficult if you have multiple X-Factors or, or Icons, so just keep that in mind. They should put a Lux stat in Hut. Why not? Lots of RPGs do it. I think the 2021 halves is gonna, going to the finals. Speed and shooting stats were low, but Lux stat was maxed. Uh, it's called Ice Tilt. Yeah, I mean, God, that's what we need more randomness in this game. Uh, when I get to the point in the week one when I... When I get to the point in we in the week when one more loss will drop me to lower rewards and the WTFs and controller throwing starts, yeah, it's um, it's tough, man. Like this game, I have never struggled as much as I have this year with the amount I've been able to play. So I've played twenty four already as much as I played twenty three in the span of like the first five months of the game because I enjoy the game way more. The, the, the glitch wrap for all the problems of 24, the glitch wrap in 23 was literally mind numbing. It was the only thing you defended. It was all anyone went for. And uh, it just ruined the game entirely. Not to mention goalies were even worse. Remember them just flopping, even just standing still. So it was just such a worse gaming experience. 24 has a lot of problems. The force cross crease meta is really boring and getting old, but you can score nice goals, you know? So um, that said, man, everyone is just so much more knowledgeable, whether it be people watch my content or other video or creators. But I, what I think happens is a lot more people at the high end of this game. So I'm talking about the, you guys are going to see that, uh, the, the NHL world championship is going to start ramping up. And I'm, I've been the voice of that. I'm the play by play caster for that big event by the NHL. And every year, um, you know, I watch the best players in the world and I'm, I'm friends with a lot of them. And, uh, I get to see what happens at the high end. And a lot of those guys now, back when it first started in 2019, 2020, they didn't stream. And I've tried to tell everyone that I meet in real life that if you are that good at a video game and have the time, please stream because people are interested in seeing that. Um, and now they all do. So you get players that are among the best in the game. I'm not talking like they do top 100 in champs. I'm talking like they go 20 and 0. We're talking like Duncan Deli, um, you know, those, those kind of get Pogues, Geimer, like the, in North America, Eki in Europe and things like that. Same with like Ekin Jr. But the reason why everyone is so much better now is because those guys that would normally play back in 2019, they wouldn't stream. So you would see them at a tournament like, oh my God, why are they so good? And now they, you just see how they play. And everyone is just so much better. The player base is so much more knowledgeable. Um, they learn all of like the, the go-to goals and motions and controller movements and it just makes it way harder. Like, I used to get to Division One in my sleep, um, and I, I'm stuck at, like, 2,000 CR. I didn't make it last year, and I probably won't make it this year, although I play the game so much more this year that at some point I probably will. But uh, it's just so much more difficult now. So uh, I totally feel you there, man. That's going to do it for this episode of Who Should You Choose? And remember to check out the Hut Hub website if you are looking for all of the information on every card. There's a stat table to show you everything. Uh, if you're looking for certain at abilities or attributes, things like that, be sure to check it out. I will see you guys on stream. Twitch.tv slash no sleeves 12. Have a good one, guys.